Another class of biopolymers are the polynucleotides. Uh, nucleotides. Okay, great. Um, polynucleotides include things like DNA and RNA. As with other biopolymers, these are condensation polymers. And we'll talk about that at the end of our discussion. So, what happens in uh, making polynucleotides? These are kind of biggish molecules, so it's a little harder to draw them. You can find probably fancier pictures online, certainly fancy, fancier pictures online. But I am drawing um, specifically a DN, the end of a DNA chain. I'm going to write B. B stands for um, a nucleobase, you know, some purine or pyrimidine. And here is our existing chain. And here we have this deoxy um, nucleoside hanging off of here. And this is going to react with another nucleotide. So again, we'll draw a deoxy sugar, give it a base of some sort, whatever you want it to be. And this is actually a nucleotide uh, triphosphate. Bam. Uh, let's leave that OH. <clears throat> so this is a triphosphate. As it turns out, triphosphates, these are high in energy, as you very likely know, if you even have limited exposure to biology. So this is basically one big glorified leaving group. And if you want to think of this as a chloride, fine by me. Um, it's basically a chloride. This oxygen ends up attacking the phosphoryl group. Whether you think this is a complete mechanism or not, doesn't matter. The fact is, after this attacks, we may or may not think of this as forming uh, some type of intermediate. But we're going to kick this group out. And then we get our chain still attached to this original nucleoside, which was at the end of the chain, but it is no longer at the end of the chain. Whoops. Because there is... Uh, shouldn't have done that. Okay. There is a new end of the chain, and that new end of the chain is... Um, the group that we just attached, the nucleoside we just attached. And so this is the three prime end, and this is the five prime end of our sugar. So we've now gone from five prime to three prime, I'm sorry, three prime to five prime, and now we have a new three prime end, and this OH will go off and attack some triphosphate um, nucleoside. So you might look at it and say, okay, fine, this is a condensation polymer. But in condensation polymers, we look for acid derivatives, typically. How does this involve an acid derivative? Well, as it turns out, it does involve an acid derivative. It's just not a carboxylic acid derivative. It's an acid derivative of, of phosphoric acid. So this phosphorus in here, this is now, this is a phosphate ester. And we made that ester from some kind of crazy form of a triphosphate. But, but actually, it's basically, since we said this whole thing on the left is a leaving group, it's basically just a big chloride. And, you know, if we had, um, if we had drawn this as an acid chloride, and then had a nucleophile attack this acid chloride, you say, oh yeah, that's kind of like, we put make a tetrahedral intermediate, kick out the chloride. That's kind of like, you know, chemistry on acid derivatives. Well, that's exactly what we did on phosphorus chemistry. We just had a leaving group on a, a PO double bond, a phosphoryl group. So this is a condensation polymer, and it really fits our template. It's just an acid derivative of phosphorus instead of an acid derivative of carbon. But really elegant system, way to construct um, polynucleotides in the body.